You're watching Voice of the Heroes with Jeremy G. Welcome back to Voice of the Heroes. I'm your host, the one and only and only one, Flea Boy Jetson. And if you're tuning in for the first time, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, click that notification bell so you can be notified for new interviews and discussions on your favorite heroes and villains from around the world. And today we got a very special guest, a man so dark and twisted, he can only be described nothing other than sinister. That's right. We have the great and talented voice actor of Mr. Sinister from X-Men, the animated series and from X-Men 97. Chris Britton, how are you doing today? I'm well, and thank you for that terrific introduction. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no That's problem. Great. Well, welcome to the show. Uh, well, let's get right into it. X-Men 97 is officially the biggest and best rating Marvel show on Rotten Tomato with rave reviews, and we're only halfway through the series. Did you expect X-Men to have such a huge impact as it is, or were you blown away by the success of the show as well? Well, leading up to uh, the uh, the initial, the first episode airing, um, I was getting a feeling that this was, uh, because of the online chat, uh, online, uh, uh, just th the number of people talking about it online and the anticipation, I began to think, oh, this is, this is going to be... Uh, successful or have a, you know a, a, a large degree of success but i didn't expect it to really be as big as it's become and uh it's the you know the ratings on imdb are fabulous the comments online are are, are just terrific and i think it uh has brought along the old fans who were uh fans of uh the animated series and i think it's bringing in new fans yes definitely i was actually a fan of the animated series when it, when i was younger and i was excited for the build-up for this animated show but i had no idea that it was going to be as good as it is now when marvel called you to reprise your role as mr sinister what was your initial thoughts well, it wasn't as straightforward as that. Um, mm. They, we all had to uh, audition. Oh, really? um, well, thirty years had passed, so voices change, energy changes. You know, vocal quality can change. So we all had to re-audition, and uh, a number of us uh, uh, successfully uh, auditioned and 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 reprised our roles. Were offered our roles that we did in the 90s and some you know they they made um certain changes like Allison Court felt her original character should be played by um an Asian woman mm -hmm. and but she was given uh, another character Which um really and that happened in a, in a couple of uh circumstances um so uh you know, I was, I was, you know, you do the audition and then you think, well, you know, we'll see what happens. And fortunately, uh, I was offered uh, to uh, come back as Mr. Sinister. When, when they sent you the audition, did you off the rip know it was Mr. Sinister and a continuation of the X-Men animated series? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you didn't know, uh, I didn't know the script, of course, because you don't get a full script. And it was just, you know, the um, an excerpt from the first episode, I think. Um, and, um, you know, so y y you just think, oh, okay, you know, I don't know where they're going to go with this. But hey, you know, it's work. And uh, I'm glad to... Uh, um, well, also having done a number of Comic Cons mm. uh, before uh, even the audition, um, you get an idea of the fan base and yeah. how solid the fan base uh, still is. And, you know, you would catch, you know, parents coming up with their, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 year old kids. And they're both watching the old series together. <laughs> and you think, oh, well, this is cool. This is cool. And uh, then, you know, at the Comic-Cons, when the word got out that um, they were doing X-Men 97, then you could also tell that everyone is, you know, really looking forward to it. I was excited for it, especially me. And ap after, spoiler alert for, every, for all the heroes and villains watching, 
Episode 5, Remember It, shocked the world with the attack on Genosha, killing off two iconic X-Men characters, Magneto and Gambit. Now, in the comics, it was Cassandra Nova behind the attack, but X-Men 97, it's revealed at the end of Episode 6, Sinister was <laughs> behind the attack all along. And my God, was this a Sinister act. <laughs> and without giving any spoilers away, how much more of Sinister you think will we see in future episodes? Well, I'm being totally honest here. Um, you know, it's it maybe it's a year or certainly half a year. Um, and so you do your your lines. You're in the studio on your own. Uh, you know, you're you're in Zoom with uh, the producers in L.A. and elsewhere. Um, and so I don't really recall, um, you know, the dialogue that I had in episodes. I don't know uh, if I'm in maybe seven and nine and ten. I'm not too sure. Um, so I don't know where it goes. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I, I'm being thoroughly honest here. Um, so I, 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 I'm sort of. I'll be as surprised as everyone else, uh, you know, whether he uh, goes into season two or season three, if there is a season three, um, it'll be uh, as big a surprise for me as well. Yeah, we know there's a season two coming now. Season three oh, yeah. got to be on its way with the success. Yeah. And speaking of how you recorded your lines, right? What's the biggest difference you think from recording X-Men, the animated series to recording X-Men 97? Because so much time has passed and it's got to be a different process on how you record your lines. Did you have to go into the studio or do you, you know, most voice actors now record from home. How did that whole process work? Well, no, I recorded in the studio. As a matter of fact, I recorded <coughs> uh, one episode in Los Angeles, another in Toronto and another here in Vancouver, another few times. Um, you know, there really, uh, there really isn't that much difference because, you know, even though uh, Sinister, for the most part, uh, speaks fairly quietly, but, you know, there's a lot of energy. So it's kind of a repressed energy behind the dialogue because um, I'm not shouting. Mm. Um, so, but the, you know, it's, it, it it, there is effort there. It's not a casual conversational uh, uh, character, um, you know, like say in Star Store, Star Swirl, the Bearded, for example, mm. uh, in My Little Pony. Uh, so this this character does require a certain amount of energy, and it has to be a contained energy, um, which you know, and then. You know, in the studio, I you know from the animated series and to and 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 X Men ninety seven, you know they tweak the the voice a little bit. They give it a, sort of an unworldly quality, mm. uh, so it's not sort of the speaking voice you hear now. Yeah. It's the speaking uh, voice. Mr. With a Sinister little really has a calculated voice to him, and I'm about to get into what you're talking about right now, right? Because we our next question comes from a member of the X-Men community on Facebook. Shout out to everybody from there. Description will, um, link will to that page will be in the description below. And thank you to Thomas Gray. He asks if Mr. Sinister's voice was, did you know Mr. Sinister's voice, excuse me, was going to be modulated? And if so, how did that shape your performance? Well, I didn't know when I first recorded. Um, and ultimately, when you're in the studio, it, it, it doesn't matter because the text is your Bible. Your, mm -hmm. The text, you, you have to go by what is on the page and your relationship to who you're speaking with. That's the important thing. You mm -hmm. can't think about what they are going to do with it in the studio when the animation is complete because the voice comes first, then they do the animation, um, which is what they call prelay. Um, so, you know, you can't be thinking because they could change that modulation or they could, you know, for maybe a sentence, not have any modulation. You don't know. So you can't allow that to, to, to enter your thinking. 
um, unless you are directed to to do certain things with your voice at a at a moment. Um, so you you know you go along with uh, what you auditioned with and what you have done before. Now, of course, in in the animated series in season five, uh, that episode called Descent, when he is Nathaniel Essex, the um, the scientist, the yeah. the genetic scientist, around the time the same time as Darwin and all that, and he's searching for a cure. He's not Mister Sinister. So there, I was speaking with more of the voice you hear now. Um, so that uh, you know that that was the only time that I think that I really kind of you know went back to my normal sort of re speaking voice. All right, now Mister Sinister lately has been the centerpiece around Marvel media. They just came out. I think they finished the run of Sins of Sinister on in the comic books. Marvel, <laughs> the MCU side yeah. of things, studios is talking about making him the main villain for the reboot in the MC, MCU. And speaking of the reboot, I know you get this question a lot. Who would you like to see cast as Mr. Sinister if you was doing the casting? Well, you know... It, that's a hard question to ask because there are so many actors I admire who I think would be uh, if I if if they had the lines in front of them and uh, everything I, I, I'm sure they would do a brilliant job. I mean, you know, you could have <clears throat> Gary Oldman or you could have perhaps John Hamm. Or, you know, he's been sort of mentioned a couple of times that uh, he was under consideration. Um, so, you know, there there are just so many actors who would have that sort of intensity and stature and presence that they could sort of embody that kind of uh, uh, a figure. Um, so I really, I don't have, you know, I, I haven't, you know, I haven't really sort of been watching films or television and thought, oh, he'd be perfect for Mr. Sinister. I haven't thought about that. Um, but I know when they choose someone, I'll probably go, yeah, I can see why they chose him. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, you got to get your take on it because you are the OG, man. So I know yeah. whoever does reprise that role, I mean, not reprise, but who takes on who gets casted as um, Mr. Sinister is going to have to do some homework on him and see what, you know, you've done with the character. You also played characters in Marvel before, including Iron Man from the popular Marvel vs. Capcom 2 video game, Odin in the Tales of Asgard, and my personal favorite, Victor Von Doom. That's right. My favorite villain yeah. of all time, yeah. Dr. Doom in Iron Man Armored Adventures. Now, I say that to say this. Are there any other Marvel characters that you would like to tackle in your career? You know, I haven't thought about that. Uh, and and talk about voice modulation. Von Doom. Now, there's a voice modulation, what they did with that, with that echo and everything. I mean, that's that's really quite something. But no, I haven't. Um, I haven't. You know, I will say that... Uh, Except for the, you know, the 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 animation of the, that I've done and X Men, those are the series or those are the shows that I have watched just to see how it's turned out. Um, you know, I'm much more of a, you know, live action, you know, you know, actors on screen uh, because that's what I do as well. Um, so I, I'm, uh, you know, that's what my my wife and I watch, uh, you know, pretty something every day. Um, but no, I I can't think of a of a character. Uh, you know, I've done I don't know how many of Stan Lee's characters, maybe hmm. half a dozen. Maybe I've. Would you I've like done... to come back as Doom in an animated series? Oh sure, and you know, if they ever do, <laughs> if they ever. You know, cast a, an actor to do a, a you know a live action sinister. You know, they should have me come back as sinister as an old man. I can actually, <laughs> I can actually see that because most yeah. most most of their characters lately been CGI anyway. 
Yeah, so, yeah, that's right. You, you know, and then actually, so that that is actually a possibility. And speaking yeah, of live yeah. action, you played in multiple properties. It's it's just so many to name. Goodwill Hunting is one of probably the one of the few that yeah. people will hear, and it just. But you yeah. played in Netflix Lock and Key, Riverdale, the Blade series, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, a bunch of live action series. Would you like to see any of those con- continue, like X Men ninety seven? Well, I was. You know, um, they canceled Lock and Key after three seasons. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate because I really and, enjoyed yeah, and, it. Uh, and a lot of the fan base were very disappointed at that. And I, and I, you know, I, I didn't quite understand why. Uh, it seemed to be getting ratings, but you know that has happened a, a few times uh, with Netflix. That you know they sort of canceled a series just when it's at its peak. And then move on to another one, um, but I, I I liked the character I played, uh, the ghost of Chamberlain Locke, and um, you think well, my age uh, playing a ghost is is quite appropriate. Um, so you know it's uh, uh, that was one series, and that was shot in Toronto. Um, so I got to go to uh, Toronto um, each time I was filming, uh, which you know is is my hometown. And that's where all the original, the animated series uh, was was recorded, was in Toronto. Um, so uh, yeah, um, you know, there. I think Lock and Key, Riverdale. Uh, you know, um, I was supposed to do another episode as the judge, but then the pandemic hit, and that put everything, you know, on hold for a while. And, um, you know, the storyline changed because they couldn't come back after a year, a year and a half with the same storyline because the characters got older and et cetera. So I think yeah, I would was... like to see the continuation of Riverdale and Lock and Key because for one, Lock and Key was personally one of my favorites that Netflix has released over the few um, years. Now, you also played Lights Father in the Death Note and you was actually in the live action adaptation of death note as well which i i I believe was a nice little nod to well that was you know a funny story about that is in the in the anime series uh i i I think i was in 27 of 32 episodes and i love that character of uh yagami um detective yagami um and uh the director called me in for the the live action one and he said chris uh, you know there isn't a part that i can offer you uh of the same sort of um sort of you know just in terms of its its presence uh as yagami but there is you know sort of the opposite of yagami one of the characters who is in the book you know a nasty guy <laughs> um, and uh he he doesn't say a word and we kind of laughed about that because, you know, in the anime series, <laughs> it was talking a lot. And so, but in the live action, I'm just seeing, seen visually in different locations. Uh, so I said, sure, you know, uh, uh, you know, that's, that sounds okay to me, but I really like the anime series and it's, it's still a very popular series. Yeah. I heard they're thinking about either doing a reboot or a remake. I'm not oh, too really? sure which which one they're gonna go with, but a lot yeah. of animes are getting remakes nowadays. So I wouldn't be surprised if they just remake the animation and things like that because it is one of the best animes to it's in a lot of people's top fives. Um, yeah, and 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 at Comic Cons, you know, uh, you know, I have a couple of pictures of uh, Detective Yagami, and you know, there's still people want that picture signed, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, who really still love that series yeah there's a lot of deep love for for that character and also for that series and um speaking of comic cons and things like that are there any upcoming projects or comic cons coming up you'd like to talk about yeah um a few of us are are uh, going to uh buffalo it's the uh nickel city comic con uh the end of june uh the 27th 28th no, the 28th, 29th, and 30th. Um, I think Adrian Hoff, Nightcrawler, Lenore Zan, Rogue, 
uh, Catherine Disher, Allison Court. Um, I think I'm the oh George Buza uh, Beast. Um, I think we're you know the five of us. I think that's I what, actually five. think I did see some promo for that on Instagram. Yeah, I, honestly, I think the five we're all be there. like five old um, original cast members. That's from right. The old anime, yeah. not the new one. It's from the yeah. original animated series, right? Yeah. Well, Lenore, myself, um, you know, we're 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 doing our original characters. Um, Allison Court is doing a, a new character, Jubilee, um, and uh, Adrian Hoff is is doing Nightcrawler. Night um, and George is reprising uh, Beast. You yeah, know? hopefully uh, we get Nightcrawl on the show soon. We're actually in talks with him right now. Um, are there any upcoming or ongoing anime series that you would like to be a part of? Or do you think you're, you're you know, kind of, uh, I'm okay with that for now. I'd rather go the live action route and focus on that more. Well, you know, as an actor, you just audition for whatever comes your way. Um, and of course, you know, you, you can't anticipate any animation or anime series because you're auditioning before, in many cases, it's even, you know, out in the mainstream. I mean, you know, you might hear a rumor that they're doing a series, but, you know, it, there's a, in many cases, well, with anime, uh, you know, a lot of it, you're dubbing. So the anime series is already done. And that's a skill in itself, dubbing. Um, but, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, I don't follow it at all, really. I don't follow it that closely unless I've been offered the job. <laughs> so what, <laughs> or what, the what are you watching right now? Like, if you was to recommend anything, because you said you and your wife watch a lot of a lot of shows and things like that. What are you currently yeah. watching? Well, we watch uh, shows on Netflix, uh, um, and uh, we've been catching a few things on Disney Plus, uh, HBO as well. Um, you know, it's uh, I, you know, the, the, we just watch so many. We watched uh, Ripley, uh, mm. which was on Crave HBO. No, that's on Netflix, I think. Yeah. Um, the, um, and we enjoyed a lot of that series beautifully shot um and then uh we watched three body problem uh i've seen the, that as well over the weekend yeah that's a that's an unusual series um <laughs> <laughs> but there's enough going on there that keeps you kind of you know uh, engaged with it um and then, you know, we watch because we have a, a close friend uh, who's on the CBS series Blue Bloods. Um, mm. uh, we watch uh, that. Uh, and so, you know, there, there, there are a number of shows that we, we, we like to sort of. Uh, and then, of course, you watch so much. And then, of course, the Blue Jays are playing. So, you know, the baseball season has started. So we oh, have yeah, to baseball watch. season is back in rotation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As a matter of fact, <laughs> playing right now <laughs> they're in toronto but my wife is watching them downstairs right now <laughs> i know you like come on let's wrap it up please let's go i gotta go catch that uh, don't worry um just a few more questions like you know what were sure. you doing before acting and what inspired you to be an actor well i started uh studying acting when i was a teenager so this is all i've been doing uh I uh, I was with a dance company, a modern dance company, uh, for uh, one to two, two years, um, and then I went to university uh, in the theater program. <clears throat> and uh, as soon as I finished university, I I started. Uh, I, I went to Stratford. I went to the Shaw Festival uh, and regional theaters. Um, and did mainly theater at that time in the mid 70s and late 70s, early 80s. You know, the film and television industry hadn't really, it's not where, it, it, back then it wasn't where it is now. It wasn't as large and as as, as predominant as it is now. Um, so, yeah, th no, this is all I've been doing. And so it's a, you know, a 50 year career. And uh, uh, my wife is an actress as well. And Amazing. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she was in Star Trek, so that was, you know, a big thing. Uh, oh, that's so. what's up. That, yeah. That's yeah. definitely dope. All right, so now um, 
What what's one line, right, from any of your characters that you played that resonates with you personally? Like you you seen the line or you you said it and you was like, "Wow, this is like actually really deep." Well, why don't I just, you know, I, I give the most recent. You know, you have nothing to fear if you put your faith in sinister. <laughs> so that amazing. <laughs> he, yo, well, oh my God, well, I heard that if, if, if last you, night. You, and mind you, I stay up until two in the morning to watch this because I'm on Central Time. So it yeah. comes out like two in the morning. I don't. So you know it. where that line sits. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God! When he said that, I got you. That's when you find out he he's the one behind Genosha, and it's yeah. like whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Because right. everybody yeah. was spectating, like speculating, um, so many different villains, and when it's like, bro, it was sinister all along. Like he's been here in the cut the whole time, man. It, <laughs> I know they got something for us. Um, yeah, you have nothing to fear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really a good one. In um, <laughs> it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for so much for coming to the show. Heroes and villains, if you're watching and you want more interviews, please give this video a like. Also, all social medias for Chris Burton, excuse me, Chris Britton, Instagram. Do, are you on Instagram? I am. Um, I'm on uh fade in cb fade in cb also let yeah. people know where they can find you at and things like that even though the links will be in the description please go follow them go support like comment share and if he's in the area go check him out man really great guy yeah. and then and the Funko and, 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 pops? i know you have a funko pop on the way oh i do yeah yeah they, oh, they... Oh, oh. Yeah, I'll definitely have to hit you. I up think Sinister is, is is much better looking than those Funko Pops, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm, I'm a I'm a huge Funko Pop collector. I have hundreds upon hundreds. So oh, you do. Guys. I yes, I have. I there was at the last Comic Con, uh, I, a fellow came and he showed me a photograph of a room that is wall to wall Funko Pops. I was you I know, actually and I actually got some right the here. Sinister one. When I say I'm a huge Doctor Doom fan, I got the oh, I got wow. get, you one, get you to sign one of these. I got the all of them. That's why when you was like, "Oh man," like oh yeah. <laughs> well, like, if I'm at a Comic Con near you, you'll have to bring them in. Definitely. That's why when I found out you played Victor Von Doom, I was like, I would love to see him brought back in the animated series. And you know, right. X Men they do a lot of crossovers sometimes with so yeah. many characters. I would love to see the X-Men go against Doom or, you know, something like that in the future. Yeah, but like yeah. I said, thank you so much for tuning in. You're welcome. If you're watching Heroes, yep. don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more interviews on your favorite heroes and villains from around the world. It's your boy signing out. Sing it with me, Pretty Cali, Pretty, Pretty Cali, Pretty Cali.